Time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. If you'd all please rise and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We begin this evening's meeting with the hearing of visitors. We have three visitors that have signed in. I just want to remind of, um, those speaking that you have three minutes to speak. The uh, school committee will take your um, thoughts under advisement. There will be no discourse, no, no back and forth. But we're happy to listen to um, whatever you have to say. And the first person up is Mr. Bill McGauley. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Bill Magali, I'm the uh, president of Brockton Youth Foundation and one of the chairs of Summerfest 2013. And uh, I guess first I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Kathy Smith on the superintendency. And uh, might be the first person to officially do it. This is your first meeting? It is. All right, good. So uh, I really just wanted to invite all of you. We have had great support in putting together this version, uh, 2013 Summerfest, through the mayor's office, uh, superintendent's office, and our founders. And we've been working for about six months. And we're going to have about 60 different um, um, acts and, and vendors uh, spread throughout the uh, Brockton High School on this coming Saturday. It goes from uh, 10 in the morning till uh, 4 in the afternoon. We're going to, uh, one of the things we're using is uh, the red cafeteria will be all food, the green cafeteria will be children's activities, the uh, blue cafeteria will be crafters. We have about eight or ten crafters who will be there. And then outside in the grass area between the uh, pool and the finance building will be uh, all the outside activities. We have uh, soccer, softball, football, um, and field hockey along with uh, some obstacle course running and uh, some, some other activities. We have setting up a stage between the uh, uh, Green Cafeteria and the Finance Building, and we will have uh, performances there from uh, 10 to, uh, uh, to 4 o'clock. Um, if you came in the front of the building, uh, in the Finance Lobby, you might have seen some of the artwork that is uh, being displayed up there. We're also having uh, an art show the first time that is represented, every school and every grade in the city in the public schools is represented with, with that art. And we're giving cra cash prizes to uh, each of the first, second, and third place winners in three divisions. So the divisions are K to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. So we have about 75 pieces of art. It'll be uh, juried with uh, three, three jurors on Saturday. And we're having a ceremony at one o'clock to award the recipients. Uh, for first, second, and third, and best overall. And we would love to have the superintendent and the mayor join us. Uh, Bernardi Auto Group is sponsoring that particular uh, piece of Summerfest. And they also have agreed to display uh, all the art later in the fall at their two showrooms. Nice. So we'd like to put an event together that includes the school and, and the city along with uh, Bernardi. They've been very, very helpful along the way. Also, uh, Eastern Bank uh, stepped up and is our uh, anchor sponsor this year, and uh, they have been very, very helpful to us. Um, we have had a lot of ground support when uh, we revised Summerfest. If you remember three years ago, we had about 35 or 40 total sponsors. The following year went up to about 45, and this year we're just breaking over uh, 70 sponsors. <coughs> so it really has uh, developed itself. And uh, we've had a lot of people working on it. We have our uh, last meeting, not quite a dress rehearsal, but going through everything that we need to do tomorrow night. So uh, you're all welcome. We would love to have you. Um, we're going to have a cable there, and they will be uh, having a couple camera crews work the events. And um, um, they will edit it and obviously rebroadcast it. Also at 11 o'clock on, uh, on Saturday, um, Dave Gorman is going to do the uh, kids' road race. So we will have that, and then we will close the, uh, uh, the afternoon with uh, a Caribbean steel band called The Colors. So they'll be performing at 3 o'clock. So in this, uh, I forgot, there's two other things. It's free ice cream from 2 to 4, 
And then uh, if uh, some of you remember the old chocolate chip cookies that Brockton mm -hmm. High used to make, <laughs> well, we're making them for some of that. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, 50 dozen ordered, and I have uh, 18 pre-orders for the dozens. They're $12 a dozen. If you want some, let me know. I think we're going to sell out by noontime. So I think you will, uh, they're the old-fashioned kind, the old recipe. So uh, anybody who remembers that will uh, probably want some. So if you want some, get your pre-orders in. Because otherwise, you'll have to wait in line. <laughs> Thank you. I hope to see you all on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Mr. McGarley. Bill, one question. What? A rain date? Is there one? Oh, no, there's there no there rain days. date. Thank you for asking that. We learned from last year. Uh, we have enough space. Uh, we have our uh, cafeteria is empty. And if it is bad weather, we'll move we'll everything inside. in. Good. There's no rain day. It's going on Saturday. The no forecast looks wonderful, Mr. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Just ask him. Uh, Thank the, you. Ne the next person to have signed in is Ross DePina. Good evening. I'm going to be talking about education today. Um, <clears throat> ideas of what's uh, going on with these new policies. So, got a little written statement here. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Tonight, uh, as concerned citizens of Brockton, uh, we are here to start a conversation on the real intentions of these new changes to Brockton Public Schools. The new state-mandated policies uh, changes to education, represented by the Common Core and the new Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers, PARCC, represents familiar and very bad nationwide policies. Uh, this effort originally started out as an attempt to drive a wedge between the teachers union and the black community, which historically uh, been the strongest supporters of unions. This corporate-backed movement, described as education reform, is actually an effort to privatize education. Race to the top is the newest installment in this well-funded endeavor. It seeks to implement high-stake testing to create a crisis in public education system to make way for privately managed charter schools. This is achieved by implementing a testing mentality in public schools nationwide. Then with arbitrary standards for success, success in place, and uh, <clears throat> for arbitrary su uh, success in place, uh, schools will miss these targets. Uh, they will be labeled as failing along with teachers, their union, and students. We've seen this in Philadelphia and Chicago, where last year 61 schools were closed and 3,000 people were fired. In Philadelphia, where 40 schools were closed and 2,000 people were fired. Unfortunately for Brockton, just as we become the next target for these changes and need strong leadership, two new leaders are not on the side of students, teachers, and the union. Kathleen Smith, super, the new superintendent of Brockton uh, Public Schools, and Sharon Walder, the new principal of Brockton High School, are two enemies of public education as we know it today. Ms. Smith, a 30-year veteran of Brockton schools, has turned her back on public education. While commenting on the new state-mandated reforms, Ms. Smith describes these changes as a, quote, perfect storm. She must be referring to the intentionally complicated PARCC standards uh, to become common practice. In that same article, Ms. Smith utters two more curious statements. First, she says, we've done great things with Race to the Top. This is strange considering Race to the Top promotes high state testing, lowers teacher security, which, which, we, uh, which are known to negatively impact teachers union as well as the profession. Secondly, Ms. Smith claims she believes in the profession. How can that be when she openly advocates for a federal education policy that seeks to undermine the teaching profession by lowering teachers' skills through an overfocus on standardized tests? Also, in that article, Ms. Smith reveals her enthusiasm for running the school like a business type of strategies that are features of the uh, Race to the Top privatization plan. Uh, she expresses her desire to involve Amy Rossi, Vice President of the Bernardi Auto Group Met uh, and Metro South Chamber of Commerce President Chris Co Cooney. What do these people know about running a school? Nothing. They are being consulted to help implement running the school on the cheap strategies. This is further proof <clears throat> this is further proof that the teachers' union is on the chopping block. Miss Smith's previous work history should be admired, but she has chosen to al ally herself with privatizers and therefore is in opposition of teachers, their union, and students. Miss Smith is not alone. Is not alone. Sharon Walter, 
the new principal of Brockton High School is an enthusiastic and high-level administrative ally in the move to completely change Brockton's public schools. In her July 14th interview for the local paper, Ms. Walder explains how she plans to not only change the role of educators, but how she, she plans to replace teachers with computers. In one of her statements, Ms. Walder says she understands the transition will be difficult. Uh, quote, that's going to be a challenge because the next assessments will be online. <clears throat> she knows these new policies will lead to plenty of disruptions for all parties involved. Quote, it's one thing to use technology as an instruction tool. It's another thing to actually teach students to use technology to take a test. Part of our professional development has to shift to the kind shift that to that kind of thinking. Unquote. The new, the new state-mandated professional development strategies ultimately lead to professional deterioration for teachers. As Ms. Walder explains later on in her interview, quote, our role as educators is changing because the kids used to come to us for information and now they can access so much instantly online. Mr. DePine, I have to remind you, you have three minutes. You're okay. off to stop. Uh, I have to stop now? Um, we get about one more sentence. One more sentence? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let me uh, get to, can I get, do my last paragraph then? Okay. If that's possible. Actually, uh, <clears throat> on, I'm going to go at the state level. On the state level, we see our Department of Education is working closely with uh, the education departments of New York and Rhode Island. This is important because a brief look at the landscape shows that what's coming for Brockton. In New York, the dominant explanation for the adoption of these new reforms is teacher accountability, which means if students do poorly, we could see teacher layoffs at, who are labeled failures. This was seen um, in the only high school in Central Falls, right in our backyard, where all the staff, 93 teachers, were fired from the, uh, from the principal down to the lunch ladies to the janitors. A wound socket speech pathologist, uh, Marie Zaminer, expresses nervousness about what kind of precedent this sets for <coughs> Rhode Island and any state working with similar strategies and goals. Quote, if they can do this here, they can do this anywhere. I'm worried it will happen where I am. And, uh, I guess that's my time. Okay. Normally I would not, Mr. Minichello. Uh, Madam Mayor, ordinarily we don't comment on hearing of visitors. However, I'd, I'd like to state for the record that um, I, I couldn't uh, disagree any more than the statements that were just made. I mean, everyone has their First Amendment right to express themselves, which is fine. But I think it's a little misguided to ambush people and not have a dialogue and speak to people about their um, positions to clarify because this school system um, fought the good fight with respect to recently uh, an attempt for a charter school to come into Brockton. We were unified. Included in that fight was Superintendent Smith, Principal Walder, at the time Associate Principal Walder, and we were all unified with respect to fighting charter schools. We know what we have in Brockton. We value what we have in Brockton. We um, came together as a community and we sent a loud, clear message. So um, respectfully, I, I disagree with what you said. I, I, think it's, I think it's a little misguided to ambush people with such um, strong and I think somewhat misguided statements, but um, I, I would recommend that you have an opportunity to discuss these issues directly with Superintendent Smith, who's very open and would like to talk to people about any disagreement or any issues, and also Principal Walter, because I just think it's unfair to do that, and uh, that's all I have to say. And, uh, if I have more time to speak, you might think differently, but I didn't. Speak. Principal Walter is, um, is not here this evening, but I would suggest that you give her a call. Um, I'm going to allow the superintendent to, to uh, as Mr. Minicello eloquently said, we don't normally do this, but um, I'm going to allow the superintendent either. to speak and respond. Well, uh, again, I would be very happy to speak to you at any time. You're more than welcome to come in and actually hear what some of my values are about education, um, my plan moving forward. And I will say when you mention uh, Amy Rossi or the Chamber of Commerce, I am looking forward to what I call a transition plan that involves everybody in the community, from students to teachers to parents to our business leaders that actually in this community support us in so many ways. So honestly, uh, thank you for, for your dialogue this evening, but I hope again we can have a two-way dialogue as I go forward. Uh, thank you. The way that these, actually, the way these new standards are coming in 
it actually removes the teacher from the process. Though they say teachers are allowed to come up with their own curriculum, they have to work in a certain framework. So you already put them in a box and then they can't move outside of that box. So thank you guys for the time. Thank, thank you. you. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Just to add to this, you know, I, I, I'm all for First Amendment rights as well. It seems the only time I've ever seen this committee break from its protocol of not responding was in response to a personal attack on, on a couple of people, and I, I would have rather have seen this, the break from protocol under better circumstances. I just think that was, you know, there's, there's a million ways that these issues could have been addressed quietly and tactfully and more effectively than Three minute speech that went to five. Um, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Superintendent Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donegan. Um, so the next individual signed up to speak is Charleston Monfort, who is signed up for um, the same issue. So um, again, I'm going to remind you that it's three minutes, and if it if it does get into character or individuals, then um, it's going to have to be discussed at a later date. Uh, good evening. Um, I'd like to discuss uh, the PARCC and the Common Core State Standards. I've actually been working closely with my colleague, uh, Mr. DePina. Um, the Common Core State Standards and the PARCC standardized test are obstacles rather than aids to the teachers and students of Brockton, Mass Brockton and Massachusetts. Um, the new standards outline a plan for focusing on fewer classes at a greater depth. Our main concern is that the standards will not, uh, excuse me, the students will not receive a complete and well-rounded education. Um, through the guidelines put in place. Um, Common Core state standards also outline a full curriculum, but focus mainly on math and English. Um, our question is how will these programs ensure a complete education while putting uh, the majority of resources towards math and English? Um, the focus on health, physical education, music, and art will have to be reduced or eliminated as a result. And students also need to develop critical thinking skills and the ability to become lifelong learners. They should also be encouraged to think creatively and abstractly, which I believe can't be accomplished through computer programs and standardized testing. Um, another main concern that we have is making sure that a uh, meaningful connection is made to each student. Replacing teachers with a series of computerized programs and standardized tests um, will be very detrimental to that connection. And um, teachers are also being treated unfairly throughout this transition. Um, evaluating teachers based on standardized testing is not an effective method of assessment. They're also required to take on more responsibility, learning and preparing um, the new students with little to no additional compensation. Um, this includes longer school days and a longer school year as well. Um, we feel teachers need to be more instrumental in the decision-making measures um, as far as um, education standards and deserve compensation for their work throughout. Um, the last thing that uh, is a concern of ours is that the implementing of these programs is an assault on public, uh, is an assault on public education. The effects of using the standardized testing and the Common Core state standards have been seen across the nation from Rhode Island to New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. Um, all have closed a large number of schools to be replaced with privately run charter schools. Central Falls, to be specific, um, replaced essentially the entire school staff at one point. Um, Rhode Island and New York use these programs. and. Um, and Massachusetts is now working closely with them. Um, teachers need to outline how to improve the school system, not data analysis from programs. Teachers need to be more instrumental in everything that's done. Um, and Massachusetts is working with both of those places, like I said. And I feel like um, the, both the teachers and students will suffer as a result of using these programs. And I actually also have a list of questions that we're looking for answers on. And um, the main question is, uh, um, what's the plan going to be for class size reduction? Um, what's the plan going to be for hiring qualified teachers? What's the uh, plan going to be for reasonable and fair uh, teacher evaluations? And what are the, what's the plan for maintaining and focusing on individualized attention? Um, those are all the points that I have at the moment. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thank Monfort. You. Mr. Monfort, if you just want oh, to. Um, if you, uh, Mr. DePina, reach out to the superintendent's office, she'll be more than happy to sit down. She'll answer discuss your questions with you, mm -hmm. have a conversation about your concerns, um, and she can certainly do the confines about how many people and, and whatever, but if you reach out to uh, the superintendent, she'll be more than happy to have a dialogue with you. Okay. So if you give her office a call, she'll answer all those questions for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And that concludes the hearing of visitors. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the election of the secretary.
Mr. Minichello. Motion to approve Kathleen Smith as the secretary of the Brockton School Committee. Second. Motion has been made properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Madam um, Chair. Mr. Donegan. Um, very quietly, um, do you think we could take something out of order this evening? Most certainly. Okay. That would be um, the, for, for parents. Yeah, could you just make a motion? Sure. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we take uh, one of the items, the agenda items, out of order. Uh, this is with respect to a certificate of appreciation for Roger Pitt Perrin, who's here this evening. Second. Any objections? Second. Most may second and all in favor? <coughs> okay. I don't know if it was Mr. Donegan, Mr. Carpenter, um, Warren Street, Mr. Donegan. Okay. Mr. Donegan. Shall I do it for my sister? Um, sure, and then you can uh, then you can um, bring Mr. Perrin up, up and you can present the certificate. It's right there. Okay. Yeah. I'll include a couple of remarks, then I'll, I'll stand. Okay. So I, basically, I, I wanted to say just a few things. On, whoop, thank you. Got my microphone. I attended an event uh, for Mr. Perrin at Joe Angelo's Cafe a couple of weeks ago. And listening to some of the people get up and tell their stories, uh, it occurred to me that this is a guy who has done a tremendous amount of sort of selfless, quiet work for the youth of Brockton for generations. Um, in the midst of all the sort of horrible stories that you boxing trainers talk about, you know, it's, it seems like they, they compare tall tales in, in terms of how much blood is spilled, but uh, that having been said, <laughs> it was quite funny listening to you guys. And the, um, one of the things that struck me is that you know, it's certainly boxing is not, so it's not about blood spilled. It's, it's, having done it, it's, a, it's an extremely difficult sport. It's something that Ernest Hemingway referred to as one of the only true sports. Um, Baseball and the others that we consider sports being mere pastimes, in his opinion. But it, you know, there's one, we know in Brockton, there's one Rocky, there's one Marvin Hagler, um, but there are a lot of young men and women who go to boxing gyms and other types of, of places in Brockton who would have no other place to go. And Roger's a gentleman who's over the years has acquired a lot of experience and he's quietly imparted that experience to kids in, a, in our city uh, for, for generations and it seems that we make often we have accolades for teachers, superintendents, school committee people, public officials. Um, we don't often stop and say hey this, this is just a, an, another regular Brockton citizen or perhaps we don't often enough and uh, I thought it'd be nice to, if the school committee would show some appreciation to a regular citizen like Roger and, and just uh, award the certificate of appreciation. So if I might, I'd, um, I'd like to call up here and uh, award the certificate. Come on up, Pitt. On behalf of the school committee and the Bond of Brockton Public Schools and I'm sure the citizens of Brockton uh, you've been a fixture in this city for many years. You've helped a lot of our kids. You've told a lot of great stories. You're a good man, and I wanted to make sure that we appreciated that. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks, Pista. Missed it the other night. I know, I'm sorry about that. You want a picture? Yeah. All right, there you go, Pitt. You got it. Yeah, there you go. Turn around. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you all for inviting me here. Everybody associated with the school committee, this is a big honor for me. Uh, Brockton, for 50 years, has been involved in boxing. And any time I get something like this, it, it just uh, it overwhelms me that the people in Brockton just thought enough to do something like this for me. And I thank you all again. Thank you.
the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, which is the manner in which uh, the school committee deals with items of routine business. I'm going to ask if there are any items that the school committee members would like removed and dealt with individually. No. Uh, otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion has been made. Second. At all in favor? Opposed? So moved. Uh, next item on the agenda is the report of the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Mayor Balzotti. Uh, I'd like to talk this evening, first of all, uh, an update on the Barrett Russell School renovations. Uh, Mr. Thomas is not here with us this evening, but my first day on the job was this past Monday, uh, August 12th, and at 8 o'clock in the morning, my first order of business was to meet Mr. Minicello at the Barrett Russell Kindergarten Center. The last time I had actually been there was on June 19th. And as much as I wanted to tell you there was great progress at the time, I was stepping over wires, uh, there was plumbing going on. So uh, I'm pleased to share with you today that looking at the classrooms on the second floor, they are colorful, they have shelves built in, the flooring is down, uh, you know, excellent progress has been made. Uh, in the building, you have, uh, again, all the technology wiring is in there. Uh, they're finishing up, you know, some of the main parts, and uh, I'm very pleased and, and think that we will be able to open kindergarten on time, which I believe is September 18th. I know in talking at the executive team meeting today, the paving has been approved. That'll be coming in the next week or so. Uh, there's landscaping to be done, signs have been ordered. We actually even had an opportunity to talk to some of the neighbors that had watched the progress over these past months and are really pleased with what they're seeing. So I have great hopes that we will open on time in a beautiful school for our kindergarten children and our families. Mr. Minicello? Um, I, I couldn't agree more with uh, Superintendent Smith that the building and the um, facility are, is going to be a very nice, cheerful, learning environment for uh, the kindergarten children. Um, walking around with Superintendent Smith amongst construction is a very interesting um, experience because I don't think in her own home Superintendent Smith does well around construction, you know. I think she likes the finished product, but um, you could see um, the upstairs is 95% is complete. So as we were walking downstairs, I could see the little look on her face that, are we going to do this on time? Because if the whole building was like part of the downstairs, um, so when she saw the upstairs, it, it was a much better feeling for her. Um, but it, it's, just, it's a great place. Um, I think Liz Barry picked out the colors. It's, it's really a great, cheerful environment for these kids. And um, it's going to be a really special building because it's going to be um, you know, basically tailored for kindergarten. Uh, kindergartners. The bathrooms are smaller than any I've ever seen in any elementary school in terms of the hardware. Um, it, it, it's, it's really tailored, custom tailored to them. And um, when the grounds are complete, it really is going to, I think, vitalize the neighborhood. The neighbors are going to be very happy with um, the transformation. I would suggest in another week and a half, perhaps, if um, some of the school committee people have time to take a, a, a quick walkthrough, it, it, you'd be very um, pleased with the progress. Um, and I would, um, I, I'd like to um, commend the uh, facilities subcommittee for putting in the work on that and uh, making that recommendation to the committee as a whole because it, it really was a good choice. Uh, it, it, it's going to be some place that I think we're all going to be very pleased with and uh, the people working on the, on, on the building are doing a great job as well. So um, I, was, I was very pleased to see our own craftsmen. That was the other part, knowing the hard work as, as we walked around. I will tell you that the uh, new principal, Natalie Pohl, uh, the teachers are anxious, and what she has done is she's taken pictures of some of the finished classrooms. You know, the furniture will be delivered probably in the next week or two, so she's allowed them online to actually, you know, see the school and see what might be as they start to plan for the year. Okay. Mm. okay. Uh, next, we have the Community School Advisory Board five year strategic plan. Um, Scott Holmes and Jean Meck, I believe, are going to present tonight. But I will tell you, uh, having been in the possession uh, of director of community schools, this project actually started about a year ago. 
And what the community schools is doing is looking into the future. And while we have a wonderful community school advisory board made up of parents from all of your school, at-large members, we're looking to position community schools in the future to actually have a five-year strategic plan and involve other parts of the community that can't necessarily make a commitment every month, but people that would support some of the initiatives as we look towards the future and growing in a different way. So welcome. Well, thank you very yeah. much. So they um, so. I guess we were supposed to have the uh, <laughs> we were supposed to have the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. That I can't find it at the moment. No. But in front of you, you you do you don't have it. Go back. Yeah, you do have, have the the, uh, um, the pamphlet that we put together. Uh, we wanted to use that as a tool to be able to. This. And, and, and thank you, Superintendent Smith, for um, starting it off. I can always, I can always uh, depend on you to, to kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, a lot of this started back way back. History of Community Schools has been around for 42 years. Uh, we had the 40th anniversary uh, a couple of years ago of both high school and community schools. At the time, it was a pilot program, uh, very few in the United States. And as it became successful, uh, directed by Harry Allen, uh, it it was really uh, really took off, and Brockton was really a uh, Brockton was really uh, a point person for community schools in the way it was uh, it brought across the United States. A lot of people came here to see how it was done and done well. Um, it's been a gem of the school system uh, back uh, in the turn of the century. Our, this century, the 2000s. Uh, we had more money than we knew, knew what to do with. And most of it came under the umbrella of community schools for that, all the after school activities. We had six and 7,000 kids involved in after school activities at one point. We had, we had when we had the money coming in, federal monies, uh, 21st century, and the like. And that, those were fun days when we were sitting on community schools because you wanted to see how do we spend all this money. And now things have changed dramatically as we all know. Uh, funding's dried up, uh, resources have dwindled, and you have to do more with less. I think we all find that in our, our own private lives as well as within the school system. Uh, the last two years, and I, I believe this, it hasn't been just a year, it's been two years that we've been meeting uh, because community schools is made up of volunteers. The volunteers are uh, representatives from each of the schools so that they uh, come to every uh, weekly, uh, monthly meetings, and they report back to their PTAs, PTOs, their parents groups, and they kind of disseminate the information about what community schools is all about. The umbrella for community schools is really, really large. Uh, if, you, if we get into it, uh, there are about 40, pro I believe 40 programs that are un underneath the uh, umbrella of community schools. Last, every, for the past five years, um, we have sat down at the end of the year, brought the parents together and said, what can we do better? What have we done well? What do we need to change? What programs need to be implemented? And from that, an awful lot of the programs that you see used now came from there. But also, uh, the website, uh, all of the uh, activities that we've had now, including Summerfest. Uh, by the way, I do sit on Summerfest committee with uh, Bill McGauley. Uh, Bill has done incredible work as long as, as well as Dean Beck. Um, one thing he didn't mention, uh, or at least I didn't hear it was, the planetarium has been un very underutilized or not used at all. And we're gonna have it open that day for shows, 20 minute shows, all the way through the course of the day. It is very, very exciting. The, uh, to have that, I remember when I first came here, that the planetarium was open, we had planetarium shows. What the committee has decided to do, by the way, is, is to raise some money to be able to clean it and uh, get it working again so all the students at Brockton High and the elementary schools as well can come and have a planetarium show. Very few high schools, I believe, have a planetarium. Our mission statement uh, for this group uh, and it is a board. Uh, it's the same mission statement as community schools. 
develop activities to meet all the needs of the community. Plain, simple, direct. Why are we looking at uh, uh, permit board? Well, every year, volunteers change. There's no institutional memory, and it's very, very hard to keep people going. What this is is a vehicle in order to raise money for the programs for the, for the kids. Strictly, outside funding. We're not talking big sale dollars and car wash dollars. We're talking about hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions of dollars to be able to bring them into the school system so that kids can benefit. The students of Rockton and uh, the citizens of Rockton to be able to do it for program. The guiding, the guiding principles really are both public awareness, you have maximum use of the school facilities, develop programs, encourage parents and the community to become more involved, improve communication, and provide an annual progress report because we always know that anytime you do anything, you truly need to be able to measure what you're doing. And that's what we're that's what we are really trying to do. Uh, kind of the main thing that we work. Well, we, the guiding principle, the principle that we use, uh, as with most committees, is just smart. You need to be very specific about what you can accomplish. You have to be able to measure it. It has to be acceptable. In other words, to everybody participating. Uh, it's also, it has to be real, realistic. Um, we all have goals that we want to achieve, but we all have to be realistic about what we uh, can do. Within a set time frame, so that we know how long how soon we have to accomplish it, whether it's one, two, five years, or six months. Extending the goals and capabilities, meaning let's see how far we can go. We have a goal, let's see if we can go beyond it. And it should be rewarding for the system and for the participants. The board is going to be made up of board of directors. We have uh, the <coughs> Nine listed up there. Any idea where the other <laughs> four members will come from? Within, within the school system and within the community, uh, people who are interested in being on the board. It's, uh, it, it's going to be a work like any board if you sat on the uh, It's going to be a working board. In other mm -hmm. words, you don't sit to sit to meeting. It's, it's more against the subcommittee as it does with the, uh, with the school board. Uh, that's where the board work gets done. And the subcommittee, uh, the same, subcommittee same with the school same committee. Yeah. Same, yeah. same as here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking for people that, that have um, avenues to people with deep pockets. Uh, so this will be in addition to the current board that you have where people serve yes. one year terms. Correct. Okay. Because, only because uh, in order to do this kind of fundraising, you can't, you can't be just volunteers this is much more intense. sitting for an hour in a meeting and going back to their yeah. they, their, their real goal is to get the information, be involved, and their main focus is, is their children, as it should be, within the school and, you know, what's going on in the school. 
this is for community schools as a whole. Um, and, and to provide true sustainability for it. Um, Bill Magali has been advocating for the last 10 years that we in community schools need to get alternative funding sources because he saw that far back that things were going to dry up. Uh, never did we anticipate that it was going to dry up to the extent it has. Um, years ago, community schools had a program in every single every single school. They had uh, directors at every single school. There were programs in every single school. And it, it thrived. Um, my kids went through Kennedy School and, and went through all the programs that Brian Rogan, I think, still to this day is involved in. Um, and what we want to do is make sure that the financing is there to be able to provide for enough, the most number of children in the system. Well, you know, whenever I um, read in the paper about a philanthropist that donates uh, funds and serious funds to the Boston public schools, you know, I'm always curious as to, gee, you know, they're a high profile school system, so they will. They're attractive, right. and that, and I, but I see this as a great vehicle to be able to attract some of those philanthropists to Brockton. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the alumni association is at different starts throughout. I mean, if you take the number, I mean, graduating classes, uh, Brockton High School, are, have been between 750 and 1,250 for how many years? 40 years just in this high school to get all the the older generation, and. They've never been able to, to truly get off the ground, but I think this may be a vehicle to be able to bring some of those people in across the country Definitely. who have um, you know, different networking than we do, and to be able to bring it in and um, be able to have everybody uh, really enjoy kind of the fruits of those labors uh, and provide a vehicle for them to do it. Well, some of the people that are on this board of directors also serve uh, on the existing board. Do you see any overlap, or will this be a totally separate group of people? Well, Chairman, mostly it'll be different, but there'll be the chair of the, of the community schools as well as um, the director. Mm -hmm. and they will sit on those OK. That's great. Well, this is really exciting, and I, I can't wait to hear how you progress in this new endeavor. Thank, Thank you for sharing it with us tonight. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Thank you, Scott. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, the next item is um, items to refer to subcommittee. I would ask if the superintendent has any or. Thank you very much. And thank you for everything that you do for our children and families. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Roger. Five <laughs> It's, so the um, the next item is items to refer to the subcommittee. I would ask if the superintendent or any members of the school committee have uh, any items that they'd like referred to subcommittee. Mrs. Joyce. One thing that we've kind of put on the back burner was the building naming policy. I'd like to bring that back to um, as soon as possible so we can get this. We had a couple of things that we were still hashing out on the ad hoc committee and things like that. Through the chair? M Mr. Mitchell, through the chair. Um, yes, I, I need to meet with Mr. Thomas so that we can just tweak some of that language. So I'll, um, I'll put that on my to-do list. He's on vacation this week, so next week I'll touch base with him, um, meet with him, tweak that, and then we'll kick it back to the committee for uh, hopefully final review and approval. That'd be great. With the start of school, I, you know, there's a couple of um, requests, mm -hmm. and I'd like to just keep that momentum going for those. Thank you. That's all I had. I don't have any other items right. to refer to subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So then, um, do you have any additional comments? Or are you all set? I'm all set. Okay. So the next item um, on the agenda on unfinished uh, business is the district capacity project, the parent survey. Um, Kim. Ms. And Gibson. The, and for those of you, uh, the district capacity project uh, is something I became involved in last <coughs> April uh, when elected superintendent. It's a project that allows our school committee, Mr. Minicello has served, uh, the superintendent, our school administrators, and our union, uh, Kim Gibson, our president. Uh, they've worked diligently for, for quite a while, uh, along with support 
Um, and what we're looking to do is uh, the possibility of creating a Horace Mann Charter School Innovation School for our district, uh, where we can actually house a dual language program for many of our students, provide language classes for our parents. So this is something that we have spent, I guess, just about a little over a half a year on, and we'll continue to move forward on it for this year. Solid. We met earlier this evening just to review the parent survey component that we want to update you on. We, our intention is to do the survey at all the open houses um, during the month of September. Okay. And we basically, um, the entire committee had the survey. We vetted it, we gave recommendations, we revised the survey. So we have the final one. Um, we're looking for input in just so we keep you updated on what's going to happen. Um, the survey has been translated into Spanish, uh, Spanish. Portuguese and French, and will we'll be available in all four languages, English included. Yolanda can talk a little bit about the logistics of the survey itself. This is Yolanda the Falco, the BEA. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we just wanted to let you know that um, we are planning on rolling out this survey to get community input to see if there is, in fact, interest in the community on creating a school like this. Um, and we are planning on rolling it out at the open houses, which are happening at all the schools in September. So as Kim said, they will be available in all four languages, and we are planning on making it available in both paper form as well as an electronic version. So we're hoping to have some stations set up where we can have some computer labs um, within the schools. And we're also hoping to get the schools on board. Um, some of the teachers help us facilitate, and also the community um, the liaisons help us with that. Once we have the results of the survey at our next meeting, we'll be able to review them. We'll be able to um, look at, hopefully, some Excel spreadsheets, look at some graphs, and see where the community interest lies. And then once we have those results, we'll be able to come back and share that with you, share that information. Um, and our next meeting is on August 28th, so at that time, we'll be able to kind of really work out the logistics of um, where the computers will be located and who will be manning the stations and things that. Um, I guess that's it on the survey. If anyone has any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Mr. Donegan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, anything that the school committee can do to, to help get the word of, out about this survey as it continues to go on? Because I know sometimes acquiring feedback can be a little <coughs> bit difficult. So obviously, this is something that you we've all talked about over and over, it's, it's exceedingly important to us. So if there's anything that we can do, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Yes. This may be a little premature, but do you have an idea where the school is going to go? Or what building or anything? I know it was premature, I was just asking. I was wondering if you had an idea. Nothing. Could I ask one more? Sure. On this, uh, could you explain to the people at home what a Horace Mann school, a charter school is? So it, Horace Mann Charter School? Um, in other words, um, it stops a charter school from coming in with, there's a Horace yeah, Mann in place? Yeah, most likely um, one would try to come in because what happens is you have a separate agreement from the actual BEA contract, you would have a side letter of agreement with things that would waive different contractual rights, basically. So you still, it's still under the public system. The school department still gets the money and still actually controls what goes on. So there's a board of directors there, but it's overseen by the school, the school as well. So okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Um, do you have a target for how many surveys you'd like to collect? We didn't go into depth with that conversation tonight. I mean, we would love to get 100%. Uh, we're looking for all parents to fill out. Um, you know, but we also are well aware some people may just take it and not return it. That's why we want to have computer stations there for them yeah. to do that. Thing. But in terms of like, uh, in addition to our parents, you know, there's teachers, uh, community members. I mean, do we have? No, I'll be honest, no? the committee really hasn't talked about the target number yet. And we didn't have the full committee tonight, so we didn't have a full okay. conversation. Just wondering. Thank you. I did make note of that, so <laughs> we can discuss it. But um, as you notice on the first question, it actually does involve more than just parents because yeah. um, we're asking if you're a staff member, a teacher, a community member, or a parent. So we really are looking to get everyone involved because, as you know, creating a school like this that would hopefully um, create very 
very well-rounded people, I guess, for the community later on so that they can yeah, well, and we'd certainly like the survey results to be representative of the community and yeah. all facets of the community. So, um, <clears throat> just was wondering. Thanks. We we have a schedule of meetings throughout this year, and actually, uh, the number of meetings has increased for this year, and the uh, commitment by the district to continue with this. So we will be back with pretty regular updates as we have an opportunity as a group to meet, you know, Great. as a whole. Thank you, Mrs. Joyce. Um, thank you. I. And thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Um, I like the questions you're asking. And as I was going through it, um, the last three questions, whether I thought were the last three questions, um, when I get to the last one, I said, gee, I wish I wish there was a way that I could, you know, um, I wanted to know if there were other languages other than the, the ones you list here. And I didn't know that there was another question on the back. And that's an excellent question. Um, if there's, once, you, once you're done, if, if there's a way that that could go on the front, I think it might be missed. Yeah, so what, I'm afraid it might be missed. The beginning piece there won't yeah. be actually in the survey. Okay. Oh, I should have a handout for that, so it will end up being a one Good. Yeah. area. Because that's a really great question at the end, because there may be some of the languages that we're not really thinking about. That might, you know, we speak a lot of languages in this city, so it's great, but it's a great survey. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Healy? Uh, just to piggyback on what Mr. Donegan said, uh, ladies, could you clarify uh, un until what, what's your target date for keeping this survey open until? We want to do it through the open house date, so we, haven't ha we don't have an end date, but I would assume like mid-October, because our next, you know, we, have to, we haven't set our schedule yet. Right. We meet monthly, basically, so we want to be able to meet at our next meeting after this closes and have a good conversation about it. So yeah, I, I open think. House end course of last week in September there. I think it would be incumbent upon the school committee and uh, your team for us to sit down and perhaps uh, uh, go and push out these surveys the best way we can as we meet our PACs and uh, PTOs. Any help would be appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Minicello. Uh, this is an example of Brockton Public Schools being proactive. Um, as many of you will recall, when we were presenting uh, to the state against the opening of a charter school, this was one of the talking points that we talked about in terms of you know, what the community needs, what may be, what the Brockton Public Schools is doing. Um, we, are rec we recognize in Brockton that things change. Our population changes. Our student body is changes, has, has changed. The needs of our students and the desires of the community and the parents change. And you know, we are willing to make quality change to meet um, education benchmarks uh, and provide kids with, with a great experience here in Brockton. Um, what Mike said is uh, absolutely necessary. All of us should, at our PTA meetings, discuss the survey with our groups uh, to get a handle on what parents might be interested in doing. Um, as a committee, um, we will be obviously, as a committee with respect to the survey, um, we will be providing the information to our committee. I think the best place would be a curriculum subcommittee to discuss the results and then discuss, you know, what the need is, what, what's being identified as the desire of the community. Um, and then following up on what Mr. Sullivan says, there'd have to be a dialogue in terms of whether um, we have space available, where it could be, um, finances for next year. I mean, so there's a whole host of things that once this committee does its due diligence, then together with both committees, we come together and figure out what you know the appropriate plan moving forward would be with respect to financing, with respect to logistics. So we're you know we're we're in the we're a little more than in the infancy stage, um, but um, you know it, it's been an interesting experience. But again, it, it just goes to show you that um, we don't sit still in Brockton, and you know we. Um, we meet the needs of the community, and we're going to do so in a responsible, um, calculated way that has an end game where we actually can be successful. You can't bite off too much than you can chew, and whatever we decide as a committee, 
both committees to do, you know, we've got to do it right, because that's what we do here in Broughton. We, we're not going to be haphazardly throw something together. And our goal is always, you know, to increase our student achievement and their success. And as we were out there looking at similar programs, that's what we were seeing. So that's the end, end goal for us, is to continually increase student achievement and success for our students. Um, any other questions for Ms. Gibson or Ms. DeFalco? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is um, new business. Under new business, we have the election of the official voting delegate for the MASC um, annual business meeting. So um, I don't know if anybody has a motion to if somebody has expressed interest. Traditionally, um, it's been the vice chair, and um, we usually pick an alternate. I mean, if someone has a desire to be the delegate, by all means, I'd be happy to um, to, to step aside if people want me to do it, um, I'd be happy to do it. Um, but we do need to pick a person for the delegate mm -hmm. and an alternate. Um, so the first thing would be who's going, who's going to attend. So someone that's not going to attend obviously isn't going to put their hat in the ring. Um, I'd make a motion to um, ask to nominate our vice chairman for that. For as a delegate, is there a second? Second. 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 Motion be made, probably seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Now would be the selection of the alternate. Who's there, planning on? Who is else is planning on going? It would like to be the delegate. I okay. served as the alternate last year. Yeah. Okay. Did a great yeah. job, so I just <laughs> enjoyed the conference. But uh, happy to serve in that role again. Okay, I'll make a motion. Like I'll make a motion to motion have Andy Robinson be the. Motion alternate delegate. Is there a second? Oh, second, yes. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, nominate Mr. Robinson to be the alternate. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Um, Bill of Rights Essay Scholarship Contest. Mr. Donegan. Yes, okay. Um, this is kind of an opportunity to um, indirectly address uh, some of the issues that were raised by the young gentleman who, who came up at the hearing of the visitors. Um, some of the issues that they raised um, are clearly of concern to all of us on the committee as well. I mean, we, we have great concerns about how the park is going to work and how it's going to affect student achievement. Um, we also find ourselves often in positions where we're given the old cliche unfunded state mandates and funded state mandates, but we're essentially told this is what is going to happen. Um, find a way to make it happen. And it, it's frustrating for us. Um, one of the things that I think all of us have, have identified as a way to sort of move the communication back upstream is to, we've all, I think, reached out to our legislative delegation. Um, and this is an example of Claire Cronin, who's our, our new state rep um, in the Easton and Brockton areas, along with Michael Brady. She sends, continually send, her office sends emails to us. They, they let us know what, what things are on the floor for, for consideration in the house up on Beacon Hill. And I saw this come through on July 22nd. And it's not the hugest thing in the world, but it is a, potentially a very, a very wonderful opportunity. And I'll just simply read the letter because it speaks for itself. Dear Mr. Donegan, I'm pleased to announce the 16th annual Bill of Rights essay contest sponsored by the National Foundation for Women Legislatures, Le excuse me, legislators. Each year, the NFWL provides six female high school juniors or seniors an award, a $3,000 college scholarship, and an all expense paid trip to NFWL's annual conference. Um, the, the, and then it goes on to say, I would like to invite your students from the classes of 2013 and 2014 to participate. To participate. Interested parties must fill out an application, write a short essay on one of two possible topics, and obtain a woman legislator to sponsor them. And Claire has extended her, um, her desire to act as sponsor to any students at our school. Now the topics, without going too deeply into them, are simply uh, you know, uh, significant issues in, in the news and in, in our world. One, of course, being national security, and the second are issues that arrive in the military as women's 
uh, roles are more prominent these days in, in, in succeeding generations. Um, Representative Cronin is somebody who has quickly become a really a very not not only well liked but really someone seen as she's seen as someone to be reckoned with on Beacon Hill. She's a strong, smart female lawmaker, and I think that any of our kids who participated in this um, would would really grow from it. Um, I think that we as a committee have made some progress on on one of the issues being charter, not charter schools, but what may evolve into a charter school by working very closely with the state legislator. And, I, and it's something that I know I want to continue to do, uh, sort of push things back up upstream if they don't seem to make sense to us. But I, I don't want to digress too far from this. The, the issue here is there is a time limit. Um, I would suggest that you contact um, I suppose you could contact me, but perhaps it would be best to contact the superintendent's office uh, to get the details on this because... She's got an email address there too. Yes. Um, right. Well, you could um, contact Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E dot Cronin, C-R-O-N-I-N, at mass... Or, excuse me, M-A house dot gov. Uh, or you could call her office at 617-722-2130. You could also contact the superintendent's office. Um, for some reason, the, the date of September 16th or so, which is shortly after school begins, is the deadline to get these essays in. So I would suggest um, any people out there in TV land that, that hear this, um, that you want to be ready to talk to your teachers about it when you hit the ground on, on the, uh, the 4th of September, first day of school. Uh, but I'm sure that that's something that will be, uh, Dr. Walder, Walder will be um, making sure it gets out to her class classrooms on the first day of school as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donegan. Thank you, Mr. Donegan. Um, are there any other um, Items under new business. Any committee members? I know. I know the superintendent wants to address something under new business, but um, I'd like to give her the opportunity to go last. So, if there's anything else, Mr. Minichella. Um I'd like to officially welcome Kathleen Smith as our superintendent of schools. Um, we thank you, and we look forward to working with you. Um, but, um, like the mayor said last week. I know John Jerome likes attention, but um, <laughs> everyone who knows John knows that's uh, not true. But I'd like to sincerely thank John Jerome for his professionalism. Um, it's been a pleasure working with John. He uh, took over as superintendent under interesting circumstances. He has performed admirably. Um, again, he's the consummate professional, and he's truly um, something that you don't see all that often. A true gentleman uh, in the way he carries himself, the way he treats other people. And um, I just want to say, John, thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing what you did, and we appreciated it. Anyone else comments before I turn it over to the superintendent? Uh, two Madam things I'd like to speak to. Uh, one is, and we'll have a, a full report for you, but you had the opportunity, I believe it was last June 4th, with the professors from Bridgewater State University, uh, the vice president, uh, Principal June Saba, talking to you about the Footbridge program uh, this summer that was a collaboration with uh, our teachers in the Brockton Public Schools. 40 of our students went through a two-week program at Bridgewater State University. I had the opportunity to go to their graduation ceremony, uh, and it was very exciting to see what happened uh, with professors from Bridgewater State University working alongside our teachers in the area of math and science for our students. Our students got to have a real college experience. You can imagine, and I'm sure they'll tell you at length, the thing that they liked best about the college was the cafeteria and the food, you know, the ice cream, the desserts. Uh, they also had opportunities to go visit the airport in New Bedford. They went to a number of science museums. So it was a wonderful, wonderful collaboration, and I really look forward to you getting to hear the full picture, I'm sure, from Professor Lisa Badalini and, uh, uh, excuse me, and Principal June Saba uh, going forward. 
And in closing tonight, I have to tell you, uh, first of all, I also want to thank John Jerome for being a support to me uh, the past number of months. I know he'll continue to be that support. But I will tell you, just this Friday, I got to move into the superintendent's office. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I went to, and I really invite you to come if you have an opportunity and haven't seen this, but in the superintendent's office is a big safe. Because the, the uh, central administration building used to be the post office in Brockton. And in this safe, going back to, I believe, 1919, are these books. And this is all about history. This is all about you. This is about Brockton. So this is a year's worth of all of your minutes, all of your hard work on the school committee, as I said, going back to 1919. And the thing most interesting to me is, although the books are a little tattered in 1919, the books all are the same. So the first thing I did when I went into the office is I'm a person about dates. I'm a person about history. Um, I think this is, is important for the public. And it's certainly important when you actually put into place a superintendent who has been in the district for 37 years. You know, your superintendent started out as a teacher, a teacher that worked in Title I, special education, school adjustment counselor, and sitting before you tonight for the first time as your superintendent. So I have to tell you, I was hired on the Friday of Labor Day weekend in 1977. Never was somebody more excited to, to get a job. My salary that year was $10,500, and I was thrilled to have that. I was able to go to that first September meeting, and this is where, again, history comes into play. I was hired uh, as a Title I math teacher, and I was hired with a group of 10 people. A number of them were also Title I reading teachers. My supervisor at the time was Dr. John Kelly, and the supervisor of the reading teachers was John Jerome. As I look at these names, there are names of people that are still in your district. Uh, you know, Patricia Hancock, that's Patricia Dupuy from our Raymond School. And also, Mayor Balzotti and I talked about this. Mary Balzotti and I were teachers together, Mary Valenti. So this is a, a historical moment for me. I'm glad you indulged me in this. And I want you to know that you know, we make history every time we sit here. And I thank all of you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Sorry. Um, if there is no further business, I'll uh, motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Mm. Close. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.